Good afternoon, Robert. We are going to talk about uh, disinformation and misinformation related to uh, migration in uh, Malta, in Europe in general. And uh, I will just uh, give you the words to uh, briefly present yourself. Who are you? Where are you coming from? How long you've been to Malta? Thank you very much, Regine, for inviting me. I'm Robel. I'm a Cameroonian community leader in Malta. I've been in Malta for almost three years now. Working on the transport as a boat driver now. So I'm in contact with a lot of people every single day. Thank you very much. <laughs> that is great because, I mean, the reason why I asked you to tell me about your origin and uh, your profession is because... Uh, uh, as I said, we're talking about uh, disinformation and misinformation, and I'm sure that you are aware of the fact that uh, online and even out of line, there's a lot of negative narratives about uh, migrants, uh, a lot about uh, Africans. First of all, do you agree with me? Do you think that there's a misinformation? Yes, yes, Regine. This is a very sensitive topic that we are sharing with our community every single Sunday that we are meeting all together. And I'm totally agree with you. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk about this disinformation mm -hmm. concerning all our brothers and sisters who are living in Malta as a foreigners and immigrants. Yes. And uh, so uh, many things I've said against uh, migrants, against uh, foreigners in general. One sentence that uh, usually we usually hear on social media is people complaining that they were told that uh, go back to your country. Have you ever come across such a situation where you were specifically directly or indirectly to be told to go back from where you come from? Uh, for me, that uh, sentence made me smile because I remember very well one day I was driving around the town, the city, and I don't know what's happened exactly. There was a traffic in front of me, mm -hmm. so I was following the traffic here, and there was someone behind me and someone booked me in the traffic, so I was about to pick a lady in that traffic queue. Mm -hmm. So she, the lady just came in to step into the car. And the guy behind me, by the fact that there was a traffic, I couldn't even find a place to park the car to pick the lady. Mm -hmm. So I was standing and following the traffic. There was no way to move forward. So the guy behind me started pressing the horn mm -hmm. that I should move. How can I move when there are car in front of me? And when he saw the lady step into my car, he went down into his car and come to me and tell me, what are you doing here? Go back to your country. You are not in your place. Mm -hmm. I was sure. Even the, the lady behind me was like, what's wrong? What? Why, why are you talking to you like this? You guys know each other before. I said, no. It's maybe because of this issue that I take you in front of him. Yeah. But... See, the way that we are talking now, there's no place to move. So we are into the traffic here. How do you feel about that? How, what, how did, 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 does that make you feel like uh, uh, physically, was, mentally? Uh, I was uh, really, really disappointed because I know Maltese people as good people. Mm -hmm. Since that I'm in Malta, I've noticed a lot of good sides of people, mm -hmm. especially Maltese. They are very welcoming, social, lovely people. But that day, I was like, uh, I don't know how to express. I was shocked. Yes. I, I was almost about to tell the lady that, sorry, I can't drive you. I want you to take another driver. So I will just go back and park the car and go back to the company and say, today I will not work because I was really embarrassed. Yes, I, I believe, I, I guess that uh, is something that uh, uh, I can understand. So this has been something that has impacted you very uh, negatively. I wanted us to discuss about uh, this uh, fact because uh, people have this attitude against foreigners because there's a lot of information online uh, which is uh, against foreigners in all sense. They have been... They, 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 People who said that they come here to steal jobs, that they are the criminals, and they are the ones who are damaging everything, they are the ones who uh, uh, throw dirt on all the places. Do you agree with that? Uh, for me, it's just a funny thing because I can't be agree with that. The reality is the reality. 
what we are we are meeting outside in our daily activity is not what the media are saying they are not saying the reality that we are meeting outside daily daily mm -hmm. so the, uh, the fact that they are saying that we are coming here to steal their job is not true because I will take the area where I'm working now as a bull driver. Every day when I'm meeting another car, which is a bull or a cab car, barely, rare, I'm meeting a Maltese on the way. Mm -hmm. It's not because they can't do it, but they don't want to do it. But people need bolt okay. or cab or uber to go to work to move around the country so if they cannot do it the country need people who can do those things mm -hmm. and we are not doing that for free we so, are paying taxes we are paying our social security through that money that we are earning too we are spending almost all that money in the country so we are participating in the economy country. So for me, that things, for sure, we are hearing that a lot from even social media, mm -hmm. medias, online, everywhere, even in the daily activity, people are telling us to the face. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's not fair, it's not good, because the government is not doing anything concerning that. Yes, because was, you, you're actually doing the job that uh, the, the locals are not, are not yes. doing, they don't want to do anymore. Yes, that's the one sector. If yeah. I want to talk about another sector, cleaning Malta. Mm -hmm. When we are walking around the town or the city or the country, most of the people who are doing the cleaning in Malta are foreigners. Very rare you will meet a Maltese. Very rare. If you meet even one of them, they are on the wheel driving maybe the truck. But those who are behind running to carry the trash, throwing inside, carrying this, running after, under the rain, the cold, the sun, are foreigners. So, for my opinion, at a certain time, we need to appreciate we as a foreigners in this country. Mm -hmm. And we are very thankful because Maltese, they are good. Mm -hmm. So you are saying that, I want you to, what you, you are saying, Maltese are good, yes, but these things are happening in Malta. Yes. So what can be the solution? How can we fix that fact that in online, while foreigners are doing jobs that Maltese don't want to do, uh, behaving well, paying their taxes, the fact that still online, many things are set against them, what, what can be the solutions? To stop that? Mm, in my opinion, uh, I can only suggest that the government should take more action concerning the, those kind of situations. And the media also has to play their own part. Mm -hmm. Because the way the media are communicating with the population, uh, for me, is like a kind of giving the wrong, inf the wrong way of inform, inform people. Because, for example... If an African man, especially a black man, is doing something, they will say an African black man did something, which is normal, it's good. I'm not against that. But they could have said, identify specifically that person. Because when they are communicating like that and they stop at that sentence, the local people think that all the African black people are involved in those kind of issues, which are not true. Which are not true. And we, when we see those things, we, are, we feel frustrated. Because if I'm meeting, like, let's say, 100 people a day, and those 100 people hear, all hear those news, all of them, they question me about those, that thing. Yeah. Even, the, even though I'm not aware of that issue, I will, find out. I, will, I will find out at that situation because all of them, they will say, your brother, your brother, your brother, your did brother, this. this, 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 because I'm an African, I'm a black man. But I don't even know the guy. I don't even know his country. I don't even know where he's from. So the fact that I'm finding myself identified mm -hmm. through those kind of things is making me really put him into a very bad feeling. So that's the only thing. And the government has to take some action. 
So I would like also to thanks already all those association, organization, NGO mm -hmm. who are working with us to give us the strength. Who is work, who are working with us to give on to give us the power to continue mm -hmm. staying in this country? So, but the government has to play its part too. Yes, and uh, the government uh, is there are some online uh, awareness raising against racism that's happening in Malta. For example, I am aware of that. In terms of yourself, the community, what can you do to uh, invite uh, the locals to? change the way they consume the news, to, to change the perception that they have against you? What can you can, can be the solution coming from you? That's a very tricky question <laughs> because uh, as a community leader yes. in the Cameroonian community, not only in the Cameroonian and African community, we organize something that is taking place every single Sunday. We are playing in Mustard Stadium Fee every Sunday. All Africans are welcome. We are playing there every single Sunday from in the morning till 12. And when we are going there to play, we are meeting some Maltese. We are playing with Maltese kids. We are playing with certain Maltese there. We are meeting them. The owner of that, uh, the, the person in charge of that stadium is a Maltese. Then he knows us very well. We are in a good contact with them. So uh, I think that one of a step that the government has to take in place to put a connection between communities and the local people. Because for us, it's very important to integrate ourselves. And we don't want to continue to be frustrated. That's why we are trying to implement and innovate, bringing out some uh, community activity so that we can match with the local people try to understand them, try to learn their culture, mm -hmm. try to let them understand us and to, uh, to learn our culture too. Mm -hmm. Because we are all women, we are, we are all living in the cinder head. So that's my opinion about that. Thank you very much. We are going to close this talk now. I just wanted you to say something about the fact that we can all be foreigners one day, not yeah. things we don't, we, we never know that sometime, some one day a war of any, uh, you know, yes, uh, God uh, solution can. What will you, will be your message to, to people who attack foreigners? Like, are you aware that maybe it can happen to you also to, to go abroad? For me, those people, uh, as I said before, Malta is, a, Malta is a very welcome country. It's a very social place. It's a lovely place. They are very nice people in this country. That's why generally I don't want to talk about the 5% of the negativity. I prefer to focus on the 95% that I'm meeting daily. So those 5%, I will tell them that today you are in Malta as a local, but you are taking your holidays, you are going abroad to other people, country too. Imagine yourself finding yourself in Italy, which is very close to Malta, and an Italian is telling you, you as a Maltese, go back to your country. How are you going to feel? Whereas you are going there for holiday, for only maybe two days or three weeks, one week, how are you going to feel? You will not feel welcome. But Italy, Italy is your nearest neighbor, which is not a good thing. So today, the way those 5% or those 2% are treating foreigners are not really good. But they have to think twice before doing those because those foreigners are also bringing positivity in the country. If today Malta is on the top in EU country, it's because also of those foreigners. People are not just coming in Malta only for Maltese. No, because they know that in Malta they will meet Africans from Cameroon, Ghana, uh, Nigerian, they will meet Serbians, they will meet uh, Macedonians, people around the world. And that's the beauty of Malta. So that's my advice about that. Those 5% of people, please, you guys should take care of that. But attitude is not good. It's only negativity. We need to promote love in this world and positivity. So that's all I can say about it.
Thank you very much. And we need to tell them to check a reliable source of information so that they have uh, they have accurate information. Yes, definitely, definitely. That's why the government has to work closer to NGO. Because NGO are more closer to us as communities, as Africans, as foreigners. All foreigners community has an NGO who is taking care of them. So the government has to put in place, maybe, I don't know, an office that can be in the daily contact with those NGO who, who are in contact with us as a community, as a foreigners in this country. So it will be very helpful for us. So we can also report those kind of things. Because me today, as a foreigner in Malta, if something bad happens to me, I don't know where to go. I will go to the police. But the police will tell me to open the case. Who am I going to take the money to open the case? I will not open the case. Fine, I will let it go. But tomorrow it will happen to, to someone else. It might not be an African. It might be someone else, European. Where is it going to report? So we don't know where to report. So it's very important for the government to open a place where at least when we are going to report to those NGO, the NGO also can take the place to those offices and the government can take action. So that's I can, what I can say about those things. And thank you very much again for giving me the opportunity. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much very for inviting me. Indeed. Thank you.